Right, we move on to this next topic called exponents and subs. Remember, at times you cannot differentiate this one, others they will refer to this, to these types of problems as part of exponents, because this is in ex exponential form. Others will call this the previous topic, which is non-routine problems, or the problem solving. So it can fit in both places. Let's start with this one, therefore, because we've just finished uh, the, the non-routine problems. As I said, I've, I've been preaching this over and over again. There is nothing that is as important in your maths uh, lessons as, as, uh, as your eyes. If you use them, use them, use your eyes a lot. Before you do a problem, brush it off first with your eyes. When you look at the problem, it will hint to you, your, your starting point, the right key to use. I've got 5 to the power something, plus 5 to the power something, plus 5 to the power something, plus 5 to the something. There's something common there. There's something common. We refer to that as a common factor. So you will try and look at the smallest number of the exponent. This is 2007, this is 2010, 2008, 2009. So the smallest there, which will appear in all of them, will be 2007. So 2007 becomes our common factor. So you, take, you, you treat the numerator on its own as, as well as the denominator, remembering that the smallest is 2007. So if I take 5 to the power 2007 as the common factor, in my numerator. If I take this one out, I will be left with 1. So because this times that, I must get that exactly as it is. So it's 5 to the power 2007 times 1, it gives me 5 to the power 2007. Plus, remember I've got 2010 now. In this 2010, there is 2007. Remember that, how, do I, how can I get 2007 here? I will have it as 5 to the power 2007 plus 3 because this will give me 10, because I want to get 2007 as my common factor. If you remember exponential laws, before this whole power became that power, it was 5 to the power 2007 times 5 to the power 3. Remember the exponential laws. Whenever you multiply powers with the same base, this base, we call this the base, we call that the exponent. Well, this whole number is called a power. So we are multiplying powers with the same base all that we need to do is to add the exponent. So the answer here is the same as 5 to the power 2007 plus 3, which will give us 5 to the power 10. We call this exponential laws. Mind again on the exponential laws, the law of quotient. This was called the law of power. If you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. But what happens when you divide? If I've got 5 to the power 2 5 to the power uh, x divided by, let me say, uh, x squared, divided by 5 to the power x. What happens when you are dividing, dealing with exponential laws? It's in Dabala, you've got to say 5 to the power x squared, or x squared, then you subtract this exponent, minus x. So that's what we'll, you'll get. In other words, whenever we are multiplying you add the exponents. When you are dividing, you subtract the exponents. That's the exponential rules. Now, what is it that we are doing in this particular case? We want to get uh, 2007 times what will give us 2010? It will be times 5 to the power 2, ah, oh, it's power 3, power 3, because 3 plus 7 will give us 2010. So this is what we have in our numerator. 5 to the power 2007, as a common factor, when I take it out there, I'll be left with 1. 5 to the power two, 2007 times what will give us that? Times 5 to the power 3. In this case, you are correct, because when you add this and that, we'll get that. When we're multiplying, you add the exponents to give us that one. Let's do the same thing on the denominator. Remember that we're taking the, the smallest. In this case, it is 5 to the power 2007. You take the smallest at all times when you're dealing with these kind, types of problem. We've got 7 but we've got 8 there, so a short of 1, 5 to the power 1. So this 1 plus this 207 will give us 2008. Plus, we've got 007 already here, but there we've got 009, so we are short of 2. So in this case, we're going to have 5 to the power 2, because 2 plus that will give us exactly that. So this balances out. Let's say this thing further. Your eyes, your eyes learners becomes important again. 
because you can see that this one is the same as that one, so it cancels out. All right, let's work with our mathematics. We know this one, it's 5 to the power 3. This is 5 times 5 times 5, your exponent. 5 cubed, it's 125. 125 plus 1, this will give us 1, 2, 6. Over. What is 5 squared? 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 5 will give us 30. So this is how we evaluate this problem to give us this one. You can treat it as exponents, but it's also part of the non-routine problems. Right, let's look further. How else can you see the problems on exponents and sats? This is purely exponents and sats now. Look at this problem that we have. That it combines both exponents and sats. Sets, sets are problem that has got a square root. We refer to them as, square, as, as sats. It's either a square root sign or a cube root sign or whatever uh, sign that we have there. This is an exponential form. This is an ex inside form. Hence the topic exponent and sat because we can combine them together. Right. As I said before, your eyes becomes very important. Your eyes, before you do a problem, brush it off first and look and think of the best way to solve that particular problem. When I look at this, another important factor, it is about the sets. Whenever I look at these two sets, this one will help me to solve this one. Because this one is square root of 3. I must get square root of 3. Because the question usually says, do this without using a calculator. So, <coughs> this will give you a hint. If I've got a uh, square root of 3, I've got to break this one such that there is a 3 and a perfect square. In most cases, I will get a perfect square. Now, how can I break 48 such that I've got a perfect square? I will have, remember this gives me a hint, I must have 3 times. 3 times what will give me 48? And that number must be a perfect square. Let's remind ourselves what a perfect square is. A perfect square, for example, if the smallest perfect square that we have is 1, how do we get 1? 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So the answer is, is a perfect square. The next perfect square after 1, if I've got 2 times 2, what is the answer here? It is 4. So the next perfect square after 1 is 4. What is the next perfect square after 4? 3 times 3, it will be 9. The next perfect square after 9? 16. The next perfect square after 16? Uh, it's 5 times 5, it's 25. 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and so on and so forth. As in fund, you can create 10, 11, 12. We follow us, 1 times 1, up to 25 times 25. Here's the number 7, so I go mathematics here from grade 8 to grade 12. So these are perfect squares. What are perfect squares then? The number is it must find the square root sayo kunga sale remainder. What is the square root of 16? 4. I saw the remainder. But manga be find the square root ka 3 to sale remainder. So these are perfect squares. So we break this 48 such that there is a perfect square. Now with 3 times what that will give us 48? It is 3 times 16. Therefore 16 is a perfect square. And I know the square root of 16 that it is equal to 4. Now moving further. So that's how you treat the sats part. Now let's move on to the other part, the exponents part. Your eyes are important. Your eyes becomes very important here. I've got four. I've got two options here. Since I've got four there, I've got two here. I must make these two to have the same base. So I can change this base to be four or change that base to be two. I'm, I'm spoiled with choice here. I can change this to be four because this is two to the power two. What is two squared? It is four. Or make this two squared then put this in bracket. Now, let, I'll go for 4. If I've got 4 to the power x plus 1, before it was this, it was 4 to the power x times 4 to the power 1. Then we added these exponents to get x plus 1. Because it, the, the rule says, if you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponent. Come on, see you see Before you add you, yeah, you got to go in generally. You had to add x, another 1, to get x plus 1. Now, I know how it was before. This is over. What's 2 to the power 2? 2 to the power 2 is 4. I'm trying to have this the same base. It's 4, but next to 4, there's this x. I'm trying to clean my, 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 my problem before you send the dash. Let's take this thing further. This then becomes, remember, what is this number? What is, this is under the square root. Square root of 16, so I've got a root of 3 times, what is, what is, what is square root of 16? It is 4. So I've got a root 3, which is this one. This one is out of the square root now, which is 4. 
that is 4 square root of uh, 3. Let me go further, minus. Let me deal with this one now. Uh, what do I have? The O oh, make life easier. So on, so on. Those two can go. What am I left with now? This 4 to the power minus 1, which is 4. Let's work on this side now. Mathematics is very easy, especially if you simplify it. What is square root of 3 times square root of 3? It is 3. Then 3 times 4, it is 12. So we've got 12 to this side, minus 4. What is 12 minus 4? It is 8. So that is how we evaluate this expression to give us this 8. This is how you treat the exponent inside. Remember to revise your exponential laws as well. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.